Amy Chua seemed to be just another fan at first, in former TV presenter Joanne Lee's mind. However, for four years starting in 2008, Amy would send letters and email to Joanne almost every day professing her love for her. They were after all in Amy's mind, married. She even left voice messages on Joanne's office line claiming that Joanne had cheated on her. The harassments made Joanne fear for her life. Like I developed insomnia problems, anxiety problems, um, I, I, my personality changed, I used to be really outgoing and suddenly I was very introverted, you know. Um, and then I realised, oh my goodness, I'm a victim. Um, and that's when I really decided, okay, that's enough is enough. I have to fight back and I have to really bring this thing to court and, and, and do all I can to stop this victimization and right. get my life back. With another woman claiming to be her husband, how did Joanne's boyfriend at the time feel? I had a boyfriend during this time um, and... Again, like I said, he didn't take it very seriously. Um, he said, look, you've talked to your psychiatrist, you're doing all the right things, you're filing things away, you're making sure you don't stand by the roadside when you uh, catch a cab. Um, you're doing all the right things, so why, why are you so worried? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm worried because, you know, you never know what will happen, right? She's schizophrenic after all. and." Uh, what, what happens if you know, her love turns to hate or you know, what she attacks me with a, a knife or something, you, know, you never know. But, and, and then when I started you know, filing things with the police and everything, he said, look, the, it's in the police's hands now. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And would Joanne have reacted or felt differently if she was stalked by a man instead? I don't think there would be any difference because she positioned herself as the man uh, and she was big enough to take down quite a few men that I know. So, you know, strength-wise, she was practically like a man. Um, Thought-wise, she was definitely thinking like a man. She thought she was my husband, you know, and she thought she had husbandly rights over me. Um, so I don't think that would, that would be a difference. Receiving almost eight email a day from Amy at one point, why did Joanne even bother reading them? I read all of them um, and I was advised by my psychiatrist to read all of them as well because and when the voicemail started as well you know some of them lasted as long as 54 minutes long and you know people would ask me why are you listening to this stuff why are you reading this stuff if it bothers you so much and it's giving you insomnia and anxiety disorders and everything why are you doing this and the reason is because um, the psychiatrist said, you need to know what she's thinking um, and the decline in her own mental state as well. And it's true, if I didn't read or listen to those voicemails or emails, I wouldn't know she was waiting for me at Borders. I wouldn't know she was coming down to my workplace lobby. I wouldn't know she was thinking of hiring a private investigator. Right. So it was important. It was important to read all that, even though they were really distressing. In 2011, Joanne brought Amy to court. However, she felt the sentence was too light. In the next clip, Joanne expresses how stalkers get away too easily here in Singapore. <laughs> 